Good morning. Welcome to all of you on this All Saints Day and Confirmation Day. The Lord certainly blessed us with good weather, but we're happy to take a break to worship, give praise to our God with hearts and lives. the Son. We believe in Christ the Son. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We are the church and we stand as one. the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, who have mercy, who have promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who sincere repentance and true faith turn to you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all our goodness, and bring us into the joyous and abundant life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
God has promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and turn to him. May he keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit, lead you to greater faith and obedience, and bring you to live with him forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The entrance verse today comes from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are the people of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever be forever. Amen. Together we pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show the light of your truth to people in darkness, to lead them into the way. Give strength to all who are joined in the fellowship of the church, so that they will resolutely reject what is against their faith and firmly follow what their faith requires. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The first lesson today comes from Revelation 7, verse 9 through 17. John is given a vision of heaven. Those who die in faith are united in praise with the whole company of heaven. As part of the communion of saints, believers are part of the family of God. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks, and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they, and where do they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he, he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst, the sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to the springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. I want to 
reading comes from 1 John 3 verses 1 through 3. Because of his grace, the Father lavishes his love on his family. The full extent of his love is yet to come. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus shares the Beatitudes with his disciples. This is part of the Sermon on the Mount. He wants their love for others to be part of their daily living in every way possible. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountaintop and sat down. His disciples came to him and began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Continue with the sermon hymn, When the World Looks at Me, has a lot of meaning for us as Christians as we seek God's Spirit to lead us so that the world sees Jesus through us.
God our Father, the peace of Christ our Savior, and the guiding power of the Holy Spirit be with us. Amen. What does the world need to see? 1 John 3, 2, we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Okay, class, a little Latin. What are those words? Sola gratia, sola fides, sola scriptura. By grace alone, by faith alone, by scripture alone. The cry of God's people for faithfulness so that we know where our salvation lies. Only grace. By grace alone we're saved. God is a God of affirming us. I'd like you to say yes with me. God made the world and made us in his image. God said, yes. Even when we fell into sin, God promised the Messiah that there would be hope. So God said, yes. Jesus was born in humble circumstances of a virgin, just like he said, God said, yes. He died for your sins and mine, God said, yes. He rose from the dead and gave us hope, God said, yes. A God of love who wants us to understand in the best way possible what he said to us so that the world may see Jesus in us. God was in the flesh born in flesh, face to face, that we might see him and understand him. He was full of grace and truth. He came that we might know him. He came in the cross as a beacon of hope and light and salvation. Some of you know the acrostic to grace, right? What is it? God's riches at Christ's expense because the Lord loved us so much. He gave Christ to pay the penalty to live a perfect life for us as well. And he did it because he cares about us. In the 1900s, there was a post office robbery. A man named George Wilson was part of the robbery. He was kind of influenced by some friends. He didn't know what was gonna happen. And inadvertently, one of the guards got killed in the robbery and George Wilson was sentenced to death. His family told about the extenuating circumstances and the judge had compassion and he said, yes, this certainly fits the scene and he gave him a pardon. But George Wilson said, I don't want it, I don't deserve it, I'm not gonna accept it. So went back to the judge, what do you think the judge decided? Do you think he decided to punish him or not? Well, the judge said a pardon's only effective if it's received by the person being pardoned. 
George Wilson refused to accept it. Therefore, it's only a piece of paper. George Wilson's sentence will continue. Our Lord tells us that we need to receive his grace by faith. And he sees each one of us as special people. Grace that loves us and cares about us. A pardon that's effective. And he sends the Holy Spirit in order that we might receive it by grace through faith. That's what the world needs to see. He lived a perfect life for us. And now you can say that's grace. That's grace. He died for my sins and yours. That's grace. We are pardoned by God's love through faith. That's grace. What does the world need to see? God's love in Jesus. That's grace. Believe and be saved. The announcement of his grace. Be able to live a new life in Jesus. That's grace. Grace is God's undeserved love and kindness towards sinners. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. We cannot pay him back. But we can say thank you with a life that reflects Jesus, just like that new song said. That all people may know that Jesus is Lord. That all may be witness to. And you and I can be part of that. God calls us children of God, not just for a title, but a relationship. And he loves us with an everlasting love. We will confess the Holy Christian Church. What comes after that? Communion of Saints. When was the last time you parents called some of these youth saints? I can remember times my mom and dad wouldn't have wanted to call me a saint. But all who believe are part of the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. We have a relationship with people here and throughout the world who believe Christ is their savior and those who've gone before us in faith. That's quite a group. And it's amazing privilege because God lavishes on us love as you read in the second lesson. How great is the love the Father lavished on us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. Luther sometimes had down days and he said, but I am baptized, I am baptized, I am baptized. And he reminded himself of that identity that God had given him and therefore he'd get out of the funk and get back to work. Jesus said, stay attached. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, you can bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So we must stay attached. And that's why the Lord provides us his gifts. His gifts of the cross, his gifts of sacraments, his gifts of his word. Thomas Barclay was a missionary to Taiwan. After he died, his family were looking through his possessions and they found a piece of paper called an act of commitment. At age 16, on his birthday, he signed an act of commitment. And that act said that he would give all he had dedicated to the work of the Lord, his mind, his work, his reaching out to people. And he said, I give this to my God and it's not my will, but thine be done. Don't we say that every time we pray the Lord's Prayer? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We seek his will. Every year from his 16th birthday to his 85th birthday he signed because he renewed his faith. He saw the necessity to revisit the commitment he had made in order that he might remain faithful. Our Lord renews our faith and he gives us gifts to do so. The gift of prayer is a very special gift. It's a personal gift. Now, I really urge you to continue a prayer life and find ways in which you can engage the Lord. What is involved in prayer? Talking and? You have one mouth, two ears. God did have a purpose. 
He wants us really to listen because he answers us through people, through his word, through experiences we have. If we're connected to Jesus, it's amazing how he answers our prayers. Such a personal connection that you can do anytime, any place, 24-7. He also tells us to listen to his word as it's spoken, as it's sung on Christian radio, as it's talked about in Christian circumstances. He challenges us, what does the world need to see? It needs to see that we are free to praise him. We are free to serve him and to thank him. We are free to be different. Most people don't like to be different. But sometimes as Christians, we have to be different. If we aren't, we're going to be going in the way of the world rather than the way of God. Because the world often says, come my way. Come on. Come on, you can do that. Come rob the bank with us. Wow. Come have this drink with us. Let's just party. Yeah, I'll use that language. You're a tougher guy or gal if you use cursing language. The world wants us to be like them, but we say, Lord, we can be different. We're free to witness. We have lots of freedoms in our action, too. It can be a variety of things. Blanket for World Relief. Some of you are involved in making blankets for the dialysis center. Uh, people volunteer for nursing homes and hospitals and visiting jails and homes, helping with Thanksgiving meal, being on committee, helping with worship, ushering, assistant, reading. You know you can do that. You've proved that over and over. But we have to have that willing spirit to help others in our family, encouraging, being a Christian friend, standing up for what you believe, letting Christ be number one. The Macedonian Christians were exalted because they wanted to be part of the action. And where did they start? They gave themselves first to the Lord and then to the mission. It always starts with that foundation. On this All Saints Day, you noticed in the bulletin, I used three words there. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Savior, Jesus is friend. Where do you start when you witness? It may be what the person needs. Do they need friendship and know that Christ is a friend? Do they need a commander, a Christ who is the Lord and director? Do they need to know they're saved and that they don't have to be guilty, they can be forgiven? You and I have the privilege. And Jesus says, I'll go with you. Surely, why don't you say it with me? Surely, I am with you always, even till the end of the age. May God bless you, confirmands, and all of us. As often, we need to recommit and reaffirm our faith to be God's people. The world needs it desperately. May God bless us with hope and peace. Amen. We continue with the prayers. The Litany of Thanksgiving and Commitment. Heavenly Father, you have given us so much. But thank you especially for the gift of our salvation through personal faith in Christ. As you have given us new birth and baptism, so gather us together as your people. That we may live as Christ to our world and witness of love to our generation. Forgive our frailties and our sinning and our blindness to doing your will. And once forgiven, strengthen us in the new life in Christ. We ask you to help parents be your channels of guidance and caring to their children. Building on their baptism and knowledge of you, and your love for them. We ask you to help us as confirmants accept the responsibilities of loyalty and commitment to you. Strengthen your church in vitality and vision and enthusiasm. Oh God, it is your strength and power which works in people. Let us make strong and powerful examples for you in all we say and do. Give us the strength and power, O Lord, in our lives. To accept your promise, to live in firm faith, to speak in bold courage, to work eagerly and vigorously, to love and to be taught, to serve with a joyful spirit, always to your glory, Lord of the Church, be with the leaders of our Senate and North Wisconsin District. Guide the staff and leadership of St. Luke's and all members. 
who seek to carry out the ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, enabling both in the heart to believe and in the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with all of you. We continue with the communion service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who in the multitude of your saints did surround us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, rejoicing in their fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us and, together with them, may receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, All of you drink of it. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now together we pray the Christian family prayer as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Welcome to the Lord's table.
May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace, knowing your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that what we have received with our lips we may keep with pure hearts, and that through the gift imparted to us in his present life we may hereafter receive life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Great. 